Hi everybody, uh, Comp1911 here. I'm um, going to make a video, how-to video on uh, installing gas blocks on AR-15 barrel. Um, see this barrel's already been cut uh, for gas block, already been installed. It's all I got laying around. So uh, I took it apart and I guess I can show you the how to use the jigs and, and uh, how things go together. First of all, here's the dimple jig. See it's got two set screws, one's pointed and one's a soft point. Here you can see the, uh, the pointed set screw there. What we want to do is that jig will index. We want to get that hole over the gas port. And that pointed set screw then will index that jig dead center over that gas port. So what we've got is your two dimple, your two holes for drilling those dimples. Now, the spacing on this gas block or this jig was designed for. This is a Voltor gas block, and then uh, also a Larue Tactical has the same spacing, which is uh, 0 0.460 inches. Now, this will also work for most other gas blocks because that location under the gas port is always the same for all gas blocks, at least the gas blocks I've ran into. So, this one, this barrel, was drilled for a Yankee Hill machine gas block. If you look at the spacing difference here, I believe the Yankee Hills are uh, like 400 thousandths center to center. So what you can do is you can drill this this dimple under the gas port and then use your gas block, install your gas block on that first dimple and then either mark it or uh, I usually just use a drill real carefully get a get a, uh, a dimple started and finish it manually but I can kind of run through that here get this jig on like I said this barrel's already been done so typically what I do I'll even use it in my my DPMS panther claw to flip it over See, I was very prepared for this. Using 11 force drill bit, I just drill that initial dimple. Well, usually what I do is I'll just get it started and then actually remove the jig. I've already drilled this, dimpled this, and uh, and refinished it. You can see that. I actually ran into a problem with this one. What I ended up doing was I used an old Yankee Hill gas block I had laying around to do this second dimple, or the front dimple. And what I discovered after I was finished was they actually changed their offset. Their center to center was the same, but they changed the offset on the on the gas block. So the old gas block I used as a jig uh, actually screwed up the dimple was in the wrong spot. So I had to uh, I had to kind of get that fit. Anyway, dimple jig setup for Voltor, Larue, and any other gas block with a 460 uh, center to center distance it can also be used for uh, the initial dimple on most other gas blocks because most dimples are located, or most uh, um, set screws are located right under the gas port. And you can see that in the inside the gas block there. There's your gas port there, and it's usually, I'd say always, under that first hole. So we can get this gas block installed. I don't want to take 
take all night doing this. What you can do is pull that set screw out. Get a flashlight. Make sure you're right centered on that dimple. Which the Yankee Hill is typically right up against the shoulder. At least these new ones. I think that's what that offset's all about. That change of offset that puts it, puts that right up against the barrel shoulder, which. It's kind of nice, I guess. So, once that's dimpled and that's on there, that gas plug is is uh, at least dead center onto the barrel in regard to the gas port, which should be in line with the upper receiver. Now, I have ran into where once the barrel's installed on the upper and everything's got your hand guard on and stuff, that this gas block looks tilted or canted. And uh, I believe that is due to slop in your fit between your pin and your upper receiver. But I'm sure there's also some variations here, uh, either with the set screw, the gas port size, or, or whatever. You get, get a little movement or the gas block gets a little canted from just installation. But, Typically they're they're pretty they're pretty good they're, they're they're damn near right on. So, um, onto the drilling jig. I've got two here. I've got uh, one that has been modified, opened up to fit the Yankee Hill gas block, and I've got uh, the standard one that you can buy that's uh, cut to fit the Voltor. So if you buy one from any of those retailers, that's how they come. They come cut to match the Voltor, they'll fit. It's relatively snug. They're water jet cut, so front to back there's a little variation in them. But as soon as you tighten up that set screw, that you're good to go. So if I have the right Allen key here, which of course I don't. <coughs> Tighten that up. That soft pointed set screw is not going to mar the finish. You just snug it up. That thing's in there. It's not going anywhere. Here's your drilling hole, your guide hole. So this one's been modified to fit the Yankee Hill. I'll just slip that on there. This is how it would look in real life. Grab the wrong one. That's typical. Yeah, I did. That shows you there isn't much difference. But the other one was actually the Voltor, and this is the one that was modified for the Yankee Hill. So. Locked on. See, here's the Voltor version. Actually, tighter fit. I got the right one in the right spot. Locked on. Locked in there. Not going anywhere. So, typically, what I do is I use a number 31 drill and I will set this up in my milling machine. I got my milling machine busy doing other things right now, which is making more of these. So I'm not going to do that. But what you do is you set this up in the mill, you drill it with a 31 drill, and uh, typically your own, I think 500 RPM is what I set it at. Light pressure to get that initial 
start because uh, you do have quite the, an angle here interfacing with that drill. I've never broke a drill and I don't know I've done probably a dozen of these never had an issue so um, and there's probably uh, three four hundred of these jigs out in circulation and I haven't had any uh, any any complaints or any anything come back to me so I, I, I don't know that there's any issues there. Um, I've never drilled one with a hand drill which I guess um, I wouldn't recommend but I don't see that there would be any issue doing that I think it's just that much easier to control with a drill press or a, or a small mill or a milling machine or whatever um, with a with a vise. So uh, drill the hole all the way through and then uh, I typically spray this down with with lube to get the jig off and uh, remove the jig and you'll be left with a hole and then uh, retrieve your taper reamer. So there's a two slash zero reamer or two aught reamer. I use a spiral reamer myself. Here that is. And I typically use the mill to ream or I'll use a hand drill. You can also do it by hand. And you'll take your time to do this. And I usually go too fast and end up with the pin fit not fit, uh, fitting too far into the hole. So I usually ream a little bit and I'll take my pin and uh, test fit. And I think I have it set screwed in the wrong spot. So I'll loosen up my set screws here to get my pin started. Unless I'm going in from the wrong side, which is what I'm doing. So I'll test fit my pin, pop it in and out, uh, ream until I'm just coming through this other side with the pin. At that point, once you tap that in, you're going to be good to go. Now I'm through. That about covers it. Um, when I get my milling machine freed up and I get another uh, a barrel in to do, I will uh, make another video of actually cutting. But uh, that about covers that. Um, this is a 14 and a half inch barrel. This is going to be a permanently attached muzzle device. I'll show you how I, how I deal with that. I get my uh, muzzle device. This is actually a 147 barrel, so this is a standard A2 flash suppressor. What I've done is I've drilled in and tapped it for a 440 set screw. Get the muzzle device lined up, and you can see that there. Drill a dimple into the barrel or into the threads. And that's fairly deep. That's through the threads and into the meat of the barrel. You don't have a whole lot of room there, but definitely enough for that set screw to bite into. It's a little more positive than a pin, and I don't have to worry about the pin falling out when I'm welding it. And uh, the last few I've done, I've TIG welded. I have MIG welded them in the past, but I've had not as positive results than TIG welding. But I don't have the welder here, so that's why it's not done yet. And I guess that's about it. Um, any questions, shoot me an email. Thanks.